Right, so um, I have to make an apology. The um, video, well, something happened here. I don't know if it was a glitch on the uh, mains electric or cosmic rays or whatever, but um, I noticed that the mouse, well, first of all, the mouse stopped working and then the keyboard stopped working. Um, so I stopped recording the video and then I reviewed what I'd just done and noticed that the audio is missing. Um, so I apologise for that. Um, I think the bits that were missing was just describing how to use TWM if you've never seen it before. Um, I'm not going to review that again, but if you you can either look on the internet or if you look for my video on BLFS 9.1, I think it's part 56 about configuring TWM. Um, I kind of describe the same sort of thing slightly differently, uh, but in the same way. Um, just uh, how to use it and so on. Um, what was showing was how to configure TWM and Xterm. So um, what I've done is just mocked these three windows up for the moment because I've remarked out some changes that I made. Um, so what I'll do is I'll carry on from that modification I was doing and just then go back and review what we've installed so far and just get to a point where we can carry on building again because it's it was kind of getting a bit messy. I was jumping around a little bit in the book, just trying things out. Uh, so, yeah, the first thing I was going to do is these windows. Well, first of all, the fonts um, quite small in here, but unfortunately, because I've been trying to build a minimal system, the fonts aren't changing at all. We're stuck with this font at the moment, so I apologise if the fonts are a little bit small at the moment. They're certainly quite a lot smaller for me. Um, I'm going to have to get a bit closer to the screen to read the screen. Um, but another thing is that the colours on the white background, some of them don't stand out very well, so the green's a bit iffy. Um, certainly this light blue is. I don't know what it'll look like when it's um, been uploaded to YouTube because um, the because the way they encode the colour, it, it can make a difference to how things appear colour-wise. So it might actually look all right on the on YouTube, or it might actually make it look worse. So um, what I was going to do is to show you how to reverse the video. Um, but before I do that, I'll tell you something I didn't explain on what I recorded previously without the sound was that there's um, some hidden menus, basically three hidden menus. And what you do is you can hold down the left control button, and while you're over one of these X term windows just press um, the left button and you'll get a main menu uh, come up, main up with some main options. Um, might find some things that are useful there. Um, another one is, again, if you hold the control button down and press the center button, which is normally the wheel button on a, a mouse, you get another menu up with the VT options of uh, view term or video term options. One of them is if enable reverse video. If I click that, you see the background goes black and things I find are a lot easier to read um, even though the font's still quite small the colors are there's a bit more contrast with the colors and they stand out a bit better and lastly there's a third menu uh, if you hold down the left control button again but this time click the right button you'll get another menu and you can see you can select fonts here but when I select them nothing changes and I get this error here um, cannot convert a string to font struct, so it can't actually load these fonts. So I'm not sure why that is. I'm assuming because I've installed the minimal number of fonts at the moment, I might need to have to install more fonts to get that to work. Looks like it's um, Adobe fonts, so I might go back and install them because um, it certainly makes it a lot easier having larger fonts. Uh, but apart from that, the, the main other thing I should show you is that if I exit any of these windows, either through Control D or by typing exit, they shut down. But um, there's a special case about the first window that gets loaded. And, well, although it says X term here, normally it would show login the way the default con configuration is set. 
Um, and that's because this first window is a special terminal. It um, is called the login terminal. And if you exit this terminal, it closes down the whole graphical section because it is a, it's like, if you like, the, the init um, or the initial uh, process that's run within the um, X window system. So if I show that to you now, I press Control D once, it gives me the warning. As usual, if I press Control D again, uh, it shut down the GUI. So that's just one thing I thought I'd better mention because it's quite important. So what I was explaining was about the X in it RC, which is a global uh, configuration file for X, X in it. Each user can have its own X in it RC called dot X in it RC in the root, in the home directory, sorry, of the user. But I'm just setting globally for the moment. And what I've done, what I was explaining was that you can either change um, the, those uh, reverse video setting or emulate them by adding in these commands, FG for foreground white and BG for background black. But you have to do that to each X term you've set up to load. Uh, so if I start X now, you'll see they've defaulted to um, the reverse video. The only trouble is if you start off a new um, instance of X term, then it appears as the default white. Likewise, if I start it from the desktop here, so it's not really foolproof. A better way of doing this, if I get rid of these settings, so yeah, see this XX line here. So these two X terms that are set up here are the two smaller ones in the towards the center of the screen, but the third one that's set up here, it's uh, run with the exec and it's given a name of login. So when, I don't know if you noticed it just now, but if I log back in again in a moment, um, you'll see that it's called login rather than X term to remind you that that's the login terminal and it will shut down the um, GUI if you quit it. So what I've done is I've returned the windows back to the defaults. So there they are again. Um, and there's the name of that window there, login, rather than the other two have got the default of X term because that's the name of the process that's being run. There's a command that can be set on a per user basis. I'm not sure if it can be set globally in this um, app default. So I'll set it here first, actually, just in case. Um, but what it is, it's uh, a file which you name as X term. So capital X T E R M. Oh, it already exists. Okay, that's good. So obviously, there's a global version. Um, in the other video, I, I show it being set um, as a user. So for the users setting, um, the one I want to look for is reverse video. There it is. There. Uh, VT menu. That is. Let's look for the next one. And what I do here, in fact, I'll leave this one. I will set it as the user. So I'm in my home directory. I edit X term. It won't won't exist. It's not a hidden file either. Do insert and you type X term star reverse video like this. I'm not sure if the case matters, but it's probably wise to... Um, follow it and just set true and that enables that option to be set so that now if I run start X you can see the reverse video is automatically set plus if I start any other oops this mouse is quite fast on here if I start any other instance they're automatically using that setting uh, likewise if I start it from within another terminal they automatically pick up those uh, that setting and there's other many other options as you saw in the, the global one um, you can find them online if you wish to set those options so one oh, there's a couple of other things really I guess to do um, so I've done X term you know it's not highlighted here 
that's installed obviously because we're using it. Um, I'll write okay there's some defaults here that are set in that global file. So I might want to set them actually. Look how true face name monospace that's a good one to set. Face size. Now like I say the fonts probably won't work because they are or they don't seem to be changing. So let me add these in. Right, and I did that from the GUI browser, so it won't work. So what I'm going to do is run links from within this window, and I'll be able to copy. And again, apologies for the font being so small at the moment, but I think I'm going to make that quite a high priority to uh, install. It looked like, like I say, those Adobe fonts would be a good thing to set. Um, but I'll do these, this additional configuration first in case that has any effect on the font so testing configuration oh there is actually a tuning font config there so that could also have an effect right now I don't think that was it was it uh, Was it? Yes, it was. Sorry, it was under X term. Yep, that's it. So, what I want to do, and the copy and paste just works as before with GPM. Any differences, we're inside the GUI system, but just highlight it, center click as before it's just a lot easier now because both these windows within the same environment there's no switching back or anything like that so that's been set now obviously I've got to come out of this to reinitialize that so I'll quit links as well go to the first window control D to quit it restart it oh, it looks like it has made a difference that's good that is good um, let's see if changing these fonts now. Uh, this one here. All oh, right. It is so obviously something in the configuration file has enabled some changes to be made. Yep. So that's a lot, lot better. So what I should do is I'll resize this so it actually fits on the screen properly. So this will be my main window. Well, that's quite a lot, quite big. That is. And I'll stretch this down. Oops. To fill the height of the screen. I'll leave this just up here because some people have mentioned that. Um, it's hard to see the subtitles and so on on YouTube. So let's right. So I've set that to large text. So that's a reasonable size. Um, I'll lower this window. Bring this one across. I'll leave this one here in case I need to use it for any reason. But I'll move this one across here. Um, I'll shrink it down first. Then control right click, set that to medium I think, because I won't work in this one. Oh no, I'll set it to large actually, because this can be the browser. It's too wide to fit, unfortunately. Um, not sure if this will work. Yes, it will. This should give me, hopefully, some information about... Uh, 
right it's only given the graphical size is not the number of characters I guess it's going to be 80 I'm not sure So it's 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, so that's 80 characters. So I don't really want to shrink that down because um, 80 is a minimum for certain things. For example, the configuration of um, the kernel configuration so I'll leave that there what I should do is I'll put this here and stretch that down um, so what I want to do ideally is to set the defaults for these windows in this file here and as you can see it's got the geometry set for the X term at least set by the number of characters so this is the first main one on the left so I really need to find that's going to be 80 characters obviously because that's how it's defaulted to I need to find out how many lines there are so if I just um, Press enter a few times, that's line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 35, so it's quite a nice number. Um, apologies if there is a way of doing this with a tool, I thought XR and R did it, uh, obviously not, not for the number of characters at least, um, but that was 35, so if I change this 66 to 35, that should automatically appear at that position with those dimensions. The only thing I've got to do is to set the font, um, which I may be able to do automatically as well. Although, um, yes, I could do with that file that's been modified, the X term in the um, app defaults, but that's going to set all the windows, which is not what I want. So that would have to be here to set that um, well let's try this as it is first of all uh, with that geometry uh, so the third window is this one here that I'm in at the moment see that's the shortest with only 20 lines long so the next one I want to modif modify is this one here to modify this window so let's count how many lines are on this one. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 30. So that's a nice number as well. So I've changed that 50 to 30. Um, and the only thing that's left really is the position of this last screen um, let's see what that does if I quit this now and restart it yeah it's the positions of the windows that are probably a bit of an issue now as well as, as well as the fonts so this one needs to go over here somewhere like that this one I had on large font this one was on medium so that small one's okay there that's not a problem it's just this second one that needs or the first one as it appears in the list that needs moving so I'm going to have to sort of guesstimate how far over that is um, so that's set to about 500 it's probably at least double that distance. So if I put in uh, a thousand, rerun that. 
it's getting there. Probably needs a little bit more. Let's make it thirteen hundred and log out again. We try it. Right, it's too far actually. I'm not sure if that XR and I had that information. Let's make this one bigger again. And this one medium. So if I put these two side by side. So, no, it's just telling me about the physical characteristics of the display, so that's not really much help. Um, so that was a little too far before. So let's make it 1200. Log out again. That looks about right, actually. So I'll just set the fonts once more. Large. Medium. Okay, just a little bit less again. So let's try 1100. And the height needs to go down the screen as well, so that's 50, maybe about 250. Let's make them nice round numbers. Uh, okay, that didn't move down, did it? Oh, put the two in. So it's just a bit hit and miss, but once it's set, it's set. So that wasn't enough, so it looks like probably 700. Let's try 750. Way too much. Um, so I'll try 550. Okay, that's a bit too much as well. So I'll try 400. Okay, it needs a little bit more now. Getting there slowly. Um, let's try some 475. Right, that's probably about it. So I'll right click and do large on that one. Alright, so it does need a bit more on the X. Make this one medium, and that does in fact need less because of a slightly bigger font. So I probably need about, let's try 1150 and maybe about 400 down the screen. So once again, I'll set this to large. And this one's a medium. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. It's roughly so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. And then my visual graphics browser, if I need it again, I'm hoping that I can rely on it a little bit less, but I will need to be using it. I'll or maybe I can just leave that as it is. Maybe for the time being. Until we get a proper graphical browser in this setting. Um, right, so that's configured, configured, configured OK. So the only other thing I need to do is to modify this X term in this default. 
app defaults and at the bottom here should be the changes that were made yeah so like I say if I modify this it's going to modify each and every uh, terminal now that face size there's an option for the X term I think it's called FS um, if I go to this window and type X term help somewhere in here uh, F yes FS size I think that's what that is face size so I'm wondering if I can go back to this X in RC and set the font sizes here so the main one if I type in minus FS so currently it's default to 12 I don't know what size this is let's try 16 save that exit again that's nearly there it might be 17 or 18 so that has made a difference so I'll modify that again I'll change that to 17 log out yeah it's 17 so now all I've got to do is guesstimate the other screen so minus FS um, I guess it's not going to be much bigger than 10 so let's try 12 to start off with and quit and that looks a little bit too big so maybe it's just 11 Uh, might as well actually just put this window uh, raise oops raise this mouse is quite fast acceleration is quite fast might as well just put this window here actually so if I now quit and reload hopefully yeah those windows are pretty much where I want them to be now um, to be quite honest I could probably move this terminal further down a little bit but hopefully um, Yeah, actually, let me see how far off the screen it is. Oops, not that one. If I set it back to 12 and move it to the left a little bit, I say 20. wonder if I can squeeze it on with a bigger font. No, I can't, unfortunately. That's a shame. Um, so it's a cross isn't it so I think that was 50 before and I'll put this back to font size 11 and I'll make this drop by about let's try 25 okay I think that's going to do. Yeah, it's roughly level with that one. Um, yeah, so this one I was referred back to. I'm not going to bother. Uh, actually, yes, that would be easy to work out because it would just be the X direction, which should be the same as the other one. So I can change that. So it will just be changing this one. 150. Right, and I need to change this to I assume a plus. That's better. Okay. Right. Um, 
So the only other thing to do is to get the um, links browser up again. Hopefully this font's not too small, um, but I, I would assume that most of the reading will be what I'm doing in the terminal, what I'm typing in the terminal. So it shouldn't matter. It's a little bit small for me for reading, but um, I hope it won't be for too long. So let's go back to this chapter here. So we've done TWM because obviously it's working. We've obviously done Xterm. Um, we've done Xinit. Uh, I'm going to install this X clock as one of the little apps that um, quite interesting to have. Just show that it's a like a native app. Um, actually, I've I've not put myself in the sources, so I'm going to copy this. Quit. CD into sources. LFS. And rerun links with that link there. Okay, so I'll download it. There's no dependencies apart from obviously the XOR libraries. Save and go back. So in this window, I need to be in the sources BLFS. CD4 slash sources BLFS tar. Okay, so there's just this configure and make to run. Okay, and then make install. So that's done. So now if I run X clock, again, when you run a, an app here, you see the wireframe and there's the clock there with the time of nearly five o'clock. So that's that. Now this does run automatically. I'm not going to leave it up because it gets in the way. I'm a bit stuck for space here. So I'm going to stop that. Um, let's tidy this up. But normally on a default installation that would automatically get um, displayed. So you can see there's a line here to get it to load. So I'll just stop that from loading each time. It'll just be in the way. Um, one other thing that's not in the LFS book, but I think I quite like the stall. I forgot all about it. It's one of the little mini apps that I remember from when I first used, started using Linux years and years. Well, yeah, probably approximately 20 years ago, just over 20 years ago, I've been using this now. Uh, it's quite a quaint little tool, um, and it's called. I wonder if I can actually go to it if I press G. And let's try see if I can browse this URL. Yes, okay. It's called X Eyes. You can see there's other apps there actually. Yeah, there it is there. So I'll download the latest version. I'll download it as a BZ2 because it's slightly smaller. So I'll press D. Save it to disk. And I'll just go back to the manual. So this, I imagine, is going to be pretty much the same installation as X-Clock. They're all quite basic tools. I'll just find the command. There it is there. Okay. 
and well you can see there's three object files there in one program and if I try to run this again you get another little window come up and all it is is a pair of eyes that just follow the mouse cursor and that's quite an interesting little thing so it shows that some sort of graphical thing that's working a bit like the X clock does um, don't know what quits at, imagine just the control C here so that's that, so I'll install that as it's obviously working and that's that's just an example of a package that's not in the book um, another thing which I can now show you now that we've got the um, graphical interface up is let's see what I've got here we've done PCI utils I can get rid of that TWM is there anything more to do there no done X term get rid of these that um, done X term cross that off X clock we've done as well yeah X in it we're obviously running in um, yeah there's maybe some changes we want to do here with X X in it um, so what I'll do is um, just mention about um, the OpenGL. So GLX info will give you information about the current screen. Right, now that's probably because this user is not part of the video group, I think that is. Um, and there's no software raster either, so it can't use that. Um, I wonder if I'm jumping ahead of the gun, um, jumping the gun here, because there is still some testing configuration to get through. Um, it probably means that the GLX gears don't work then, which is like a graphical thing. No, it doesn't. So the OpenGL is not working at the moment. So yeah, maybe I'm getting a bit, a bit ahead. So let's carry on going through the manual then. X in it. Um, it says at this point you can start X organ and virtual terminal with start X and you can toggle between TTY1 and TTY7 and to automatically start X org on the first available virtual terminal modify, modify the start X script as the root user with this. So I think this is what it's doing anyway but let's put this in anyway so we'll probably see that when we restart X so X org testing configuration so LD config well, it doesn't need to be restarted because we're already inside it before starting XORG for the first time, it's often needed to reboot. The system to ensure appropriate demons are started and appropriate security issues are properly set. As an alternative, logging out and back in may work, but as of this rising has not been tested. Um, so it says about issuing StarTex there, which we know about there. It explains about the XTERM windows and so on. The X clock's not up because, well, initially it hadn't been built, and now I've commented out the line that causes that to start. When testing XORG with a TWM manager, there may be several warnings about the XORG log file. Missing files, missing fonts, their warnings don't affect functionality, but can be removed if desired by installing the XORG legacy fonts. Um, so generally there's no configuration, but 
you can see details in the section called setting up XORG devices. So that's in this page, so we'll come to that. DRI, um, to check DRI drivers are installed, check the log file. So let's have a look. So let's cat that and grep for DRI. And you can see it says DRI2 is enabled and it's initializing the DRI3 extension as well. So that looks like that's working. Uh, it says here to run GLX info, and as you saw, that didn't work. And I think, as I say, this is because the kernel text isn't in the video group. I think that's what it is. Um, it says you can increase. Robosity here, I don't know if that's making a difference. No, that's made any difference to this at all. Um, so let's go back up. It doesn't actually mention about the group, um, but I suspect that's what it is. Uh, let's try user mod. Sudo su user mod. Um, we want to append to the list of groups video to the user kernel attacks. So I'll have to log in again as kernel text. Type groups. So I'm in the video group now. Let's try GLX gears again. Uh, info. Yes, that's better. That's what I thought. So it's not in the book. I couldn't see that it was in the book unless I've missed it somewhere. But GLX info. Let's do uh, less on that. And as you can see, the name of display is colon zero, which ties up with this information here. Display is colon zero, screen is zero, and as you can see, DRI direct rendering rendering is set. It's yes, and you can see all the capabilities that are available. Um, so here's confirmation of our hardware device. There's the version of Mesa we've built. You can see how much memory we've got, one and a half gig. Uh, you can see that we've got Glaze 1 as well as Glaze 2 and 3. And there's more information there about the capabilities of each. This is um, GL, OpenGL version 3 we've got. And I'm pretty sure, it, yeah, there's 3.1. I think we read yesterday that there was 4.5. It didn't look like that was there, actually. Uh, maybe I've remembered that wrong. Oh, there it is. Core profile version 4.5. So, yeah, there it is. Um, and there's all the video modes that are available and their capabilities. So that's GLX info, it's quite useful. So GLX gears, and this will run, as it says there, at the maximum frame rate. So I'd guess this will come up with, oh, it's coming up with three. Yes, that's right, yeah, 60 frames per second. It's rendering 300 frames in five seconds. Um, and if I enlarge this, it should make, if 
fact, I think I'll make this full screen. Perhaps not. I thought it was a full screen option there. I can just make it bigger. And in theory, you can see that's whizzing away nice and smoothly. I don't know if you can see that on the video when the video has been posted, but it's certainly very smooth on my screen. It's running very fast or as fast as it can. Um, so to me, that looks like the video acceleration is enabled. Just reduce that back down again. And you can see the um, frame rate did, after me moving it around, it did get back up to 60 frames per second when it was enlarged. So the reason why it's dropped is because that's when I was resizing the frame, so it wasn't actually rendering at that time. So it reduces the average. So that's all good news. Um, I can't remember, is it escape to come out of that? Yeah, it's escape when you've got the graphic window highlighted. So now let's try this lib GL debug verbose GL inf info, GLX info. Uh, this should produce more output. If we need more output, it doesn't look to be any different actually. No, that doesn't look to be any different. Let's try this command here to see if this produces uh, so produces oops presumes there's gonna be a space in between these two strings. So I've copied them separately because I don't want to copy the carriage determinants on the browser. Yeah, so that is confirming that OpenGL is activated and that DRI is activated as well. So if it reports something other than software rasterizer, then you have working acceleration for the user who ran the command. Um, so I'm not, bit, not sure which bit it would say. Oh, um, I imagine it would be this bit here, actually, because that's the renderer. So I imagine it would say software rasterizer there. Yes, there you go. It says LLVM pipe in that example. So that is good. A bit about hybrid graphics. If you're on one of these laptops that has hybrid graphics, um, I've tried over the years to try and get that to work. I've never had much success with it, but uh, when I stopped trying a few years later, there was a new project called Bumblebee, um, which was supposedly able to make that work a lot better. Um, and hybrid graphics is where you've got um, an automatic system where just desktop 2D stuff will use the inbuilt Intel chip, uh, Intel GPU on the chip, because it, it uses a lot less um, power and therefore electricity and therefore battery whereas if you switch to a, an application that needs 3d processing that this hybrid graphic system will automatically switch over to that um, system you know for example it might be nvidia one well, think most of them are nvidia um, system so it, it takes advantage of that extra power that the nvidia or the 3d system can generate in producing graphics but obviously it takes up more power in terms of electricity and um, amperage what's what's per amperage per hour so it means your batteries last for a lot less long uh, less not less 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 time um, so what else can we do here so that's still about the hybrid graphics so it says here if you need to override any settings if something's not being detected correctly how to fine-tune it so um, generally the Intel you don't really need to do anything with them um, Nvidia I've never had to do any tweaking I can't comment on anything else because I've not experienced anything else but um, yeah Intel and Nvidia just tend to work out of the box so let's move on to configuring or tuning font config. 
Uh, if you only read text in English and have you with the common Libra fonts installed on the next page, you may never need to worry about the details of how config works, but there are a few, there are many things which can be altered if they do not suit your needs. So I'm going to look at this on the graphical browser. It'll just be easier to, did I finish that off, that X in it? Yes, I did. So it shows you how to use the FC files, various files, rules to choosing a font. So some information here about hinting an aliasing. So these settings are only really useful for applications that rely on um, font config more. It says, as it says here, GNOME and KDE can override these changes. So we can copy that in. So let's put this out of the way and just copy that in to get that. That might make some difference to what we're looking at or indeed what I'm looking at at the moment. Whether the subtleties can come across on the video, I don't know. Uh, just out of interest, I do recall all my videos uncompressed um, and with 8-bit RGB, so it's full 8-bit as you see the pixels or as I see the pixels is what gets recorded. I record the audio uncompressed with FLAC um, but unfortunately once the file gets uploaded uh, Google recompressed the videos um, down to is it YUV 420 I think it is so a lot of the color information is discarded so regretfully, you don't see exactly what I see on the screen and, and what I record as well, um, which is a bit unfortunate. So that is why I'm aware that subtle things might go missing or look differently. For example, the colours certainly look different. They look a bit washed out once they get converted to YUV 4, is it 420 or 422? I can't remember which Google uses now. Um, and pixels can change their appearance, you know, especially if they're fine um, like dithering, that can look quite different on the screen once it's been re-rendered by Google. So it's a bit unfortunate, but it's something I'm aware of and I do try to be conscious of that. For that for that matter, for that reason, what I've just mentioned, these borders on these windows, when they're not highlighted, when they're out of focus, they have actually got some dithering on them, so I don't know how that will appear. But to me at the moment, it looks um, just like a very faint checkerboard. Um, but that might just appear as a grey line. Certainly when I hover over it turns to a grey, bluish grey line. So anyway, let me carry on copying this configuration here. So I'll edit that because the display seemed to go funny but it might just be the way it rendered oh and it's put this into the home directory of the user so it's not a global a global configuration yes that is copied ok And it says you'll now need to edit any preferred editor. So let me get it up again. Let's read it. So yeah, just looking at these, see if there's anything worth changing. It's hinting is enabled. LCD filter.
and see how they sing. Sub pixels usually, usually RGB, so you'd have to find out what your monitor, how your monitor looks. So I don't think I'm going to change anything there. I imagine the defaults would be pretty reasonable. Um, I'm going to have a look at the rest of this page about halfway through, and then I'll restart X to see. Um, in fact, what I should do is do this a bit at a time, so I know if there's anything that I don't like, I can change. So um, I'm on the tuning font config link to remember where I need to get to. So I'll quit the browser and then quit on mouse, quit X Windows. I'm going to actually log out of here to get that video group set. So if I do groups, it should now be set, which it is. I'm going to do start X. And again, if I type GLX gears afresh now, it should it should work straight away. Oh. Yeah, that's why it wouldn't find it if I spell it right. GLX gears, yeah, it's working straight out, so that's fine. Um, I can't actually see any differences with the hinting or anything. Whether that's anything to do with the font or not, I don't know. Um, but let me go to back to the browser. So X clock, I'll go up and go directly to tuning font config and it's page 8 I need to be on. So disabling bitmap fonts in previous versions of BLFS, the ugly old XOR bitmap fonts we installed. Now pen, many people do not need to install any of them, but if for some reason you've installed one or more bitmap fonts, you can prevent them from being used by com, font config by creating the following file as a root user. So they are pretty ugly. These were the fonts that were only available years and years ago, and they were pretty ropey. Uh, so I'm going to add this in to get rid of them. Uh, so do SU. I think capture the carriage return there. Okay. Adding extra font directories. So I think we've already seen this because we've created a font directory for um, the Deja Vu fonts. Uh, it does mention text live puts many fonts in its own subdirectory and in open type and true type. Oh, okay, so it's saying if you install text live, you want to make some of the fonts visible. It says about not making them all visible because there's so many of them and they can get misused by the system so I'll skip over that preferring certain fonts different ways of doing this um, as an example here if you wish to use a Nimbus Roman number 9 L font whenever Times New Roman is referenced so I'll leave that preferring CJK fonts if that's appropriate to you and editing old style comp files, particularly with Chinese fonts. I'll skip over that. And there's some more information here, some more links uh, to the ArchWiki and Gen2 Wiki and a, a blog entry by the looks of it. So, really, that's it as far as. Uh, tuning font config, config is concerned. 
Uh, we'll come back to TTF and OTF fonts where we were before when I installed the Deja Vu fonts. Um, normally I do install quite a few here but I'm not really going to bother I don't think um, so these Noto fonts are used by the KDE Framework 5 so I might install these I think Yeah, so I think I'll install these now. There's quite a number of fonts that get installed with this one. Um, I wonder if I should use these liberation fonts I've looked at earlier on. Actually, it does say that most people find them useful for pages of one of those fonts is requested. So it might be an idea to install this. It's a shame it's not within the BLFS book where it could give us some definitive um, instructions, but never mind. Let's click on here. Looks like we need a Python font tools. Um, module there. I might actually leave that. I don't want to go digging around too much. Uh, so I think I'll have a go at the Noto fonts. Now somewhere here. There's a download where you can download all the fonts. Um, yeah, this has changed the looks of it. Uh, let's go back here. So it says to install Noto Sans itself and Noto Sans symbols. to the wrong keyboard if I put my language in here not so sons right so it looks like that's what I need to download Noto Serif. Right, so there's several. So continent, Europe, region. Oops. Oh, keep whizzing off the end of that list and it kind of screws the page up. So United Kingdom. Latin, English. It hasn't really narrowed it down much. Let's look at that one first. Right, 
right, this doesn't look like it's going to be easy to download actually. So there's an example of the styles and the character set. Uh, I think I might leave this until I've got a web browser because it's going to be difficult to navigate this page. It seems to be quite a dynamic page. Um, I'll have to come back to these, I think. I'll just have a quick look to see if there's any others that are easy to install, like Deja Viewer. Uh, might try the Microsoft Core fonts because they're fairly generic. Let's have a look. So just the fonts. So this looks involved as well. Looks like you've got to install a tool to extract from the original Microsoft font exe file. So I think I'll avoid that as well. I, I was hoping there'd be some easier fonts to install uh, that would be useful. A uh, GNU free font, this might be useful. Oh, some fonts are primarily for printed output. Well, I'll take a chance with what I've got. Um, although the Deja View fonts aren't exactly uh, comprehensive, there there are some pretty basic fonts there, so it should work in most situations. So I'll move on. Xorg Legacy. Right, so that looks like that's an optional thing to install if we need it, maybe, to assist them with the instruction. There's still a few old packages which might require benefit from these deprecated fonts. And so the following packages are shown here. Right, I think I'll install these and in, in case there is a package that does need these. I um, can't imagine this is going to take too long to install. So uh, let's go on to that. So once again we've got a steering file here to control this. Let's come out of this. Uh, so I'm not duplicate, is it? We're just pasting this in. Download the required files using get, put all this in. So once again, we've got this function. It's probably not there as if um, restarted X in the environment a few times. So I'll paste that all in. Start a shell that will quit on an error. And build and install each of them with that command. Or that set of commands rather.
Okay, we've got an error there, unfortunately. In fonts, jizz, misc. Failed to write to cash. Misc. What was it doing? So just done Adobe seventy five DPI. What orders the packages in? Right, so yeah, so it's on, so it done the configure, looks like it was building then. So the build was successful. Let's see what the command is to install. Make install. Fail to write to cache. I wonder if that's because it's because it's foreign um, character set is not installed. That's a possibility. Um, I vaguely remember having a similar problem to this before. So what I'm going to do, I think these are the Japanese um, based fonts. So I'm going to tidy that up. and remove that one from the MD5 file. Uh, let's make a backup of this. Just make a backup of this and then I can modify this without worrying about losing any information. Um, I guess there's going to be others that will fail. In fact, I can get rid of the ones it's already done, which is that one, that one, and that one. I have a feeling these other four are going to fail. So I need to do the bashy again. Then I need to run this script again. Felt right cache, yeah, I think this is what the problem is. I'll just check that this actually exists. Yeah, it does. So that's the font they will misc, so I'll remove that. It could be I haven't got support in the kernel or just the configuration, I don't know. Um, but being as these are fonts that I'm probably not interested in as a, an English speaking user, um, I, I would hope that if you do rely on these that your system is already set to take them and they're not going to fail. So it's the day we won. The misc misc may work. I'm not sure what this ISS one is. So let's rerun these commands.
Yeah, let's behave in the same way. And is the Is the making stalls work? Yeah, it's the making stall that's failing. Okay. So just the last one to install. I'm feeling this might work, but I can't be sure. Depends on what sort of miscellaneous miscellaneous is. Okay, so that's worked. So I'm going to move my legacy.md5.backup back to legacy.md5. Okay, and that's that installed now, at least the ones I could install. Uh, so that is the end of the X window system environment chapter. So we've now got an environment that's um, Featured, I wouldn't call it full feature because um, I've skipped a lot so far. That a lot of stuff has to be reinstalled, but certainly it's um, operational. Um, if we have a look at the messages, hopefully, no kernel errors that have been produced by any of the code that we've compiled, so that's good. Um, right, yeah, this message here, in case you're wondering what happened there, that's when my keyboard and mouse locked up. Um, I literally just had to press the power button to power the machine down. Uh, I have a feeling the machine actually locked up rather than the keyboard and the mouse, but nothing was responsing, uh, responding. Uh, so yeah, there's no problems um, to speak of. Anything, nothing, certainly nothing that will affect the continuation of uh, rebuilding, or sorry, building this system up. Uh, so yeah, uh, just to recap what we've done, we've installed various packages, um, some as minimally as possible that will have to be rebuilt with further features uh, to enable us to reach this point now where we've got a graphical environment where it's easy to, rather than switching between virtual t text terminals, it, as you've seen, it's easy just to copy stuff from one window to the other as you would do in a normal GUI. Um, the only problem we've got now is that we're still relying on a text-based browser and so that'll be the next uh, milestone would be to get a browser up and running. Um, now of the I think four browsers there are if I go to the, in fact I'll show you on this it'll be a lot easier text browsers, let's find the graphical browsers, so graphical browsers of the, oh there's five there, oh yes that's right there's an older version of Firefox, I can't remember the exact reason for that now. Um, I've looked into each of these and build them and some look really simple because there's only one dependency but that one dependency needs loads of dependencies. So um, from past experience, I'm pretty sure that Falcon is a good 
browser to go for. The only trouble is I've got this warning with it now because it needs Qt Web Engine. Um, and there's potential vulnerabilities with that. Um, so that's the only problem with it. But uh, I think I'm still going to go with it just because it's easier at the moment. Firefox does need a lot of extra um, dependencies They're like graphical and video and sound, I think, dependencies. So I'm not really going to bother with that. I'm not sh not not the moment anyway. We'll, we'll install it. Uh, CMonkey. Remember last time I built this on BLFS 9, I had issues installing it. Um, I can't remember what the problems w was now with it, but uh, it, yeah, it wasn't straightforward, unfortunately. But even this has got quite a few dependencies, which um, maybe like GTK will probably evolve into. In fact, there's two GTKs here: GTK plus two and GTK plus three. So they will even have their own dependencies. So that that could get quite sticky. Um, Epiphany. Yeah, this is an, a GNOME-based browser, so that's going to be quite involved with dependencies. Uh, Falcon is actually a KDE or K, the KDE Frameworks-based browser. Um, you'd expect to have, to have lots of dependencies, but I don't think they're too bad. I think I can get away with installing this in a basic installation. Um and then reinstall it at a later time with the extra functionality that's needed. Um, I think we've already got CMake installed. Qt Web Engine. That's got a few requirements. We've got NSS. So this needs Python 2 we'll have to install. And Python Qt. Which we've got. I think we've got all of these. I'll have to check these when we come to do this. Um... Yeah, I think it's got the minimum number of um, dependencies. These are all recommended, but I think we can get away with just installing it as it is. If there is any stuff that comes back, then maybe we can just install those ones that are, are being complained about. So that's really why I would choose Falcon. Of course, it's up to you if you want to install your own browser. You'd obviously have to follow that dependency tree that that browser takes. Um, but yeah, Falcon's the one I'm going to be doing. 